Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can set up your Raspberry Pi headlessly uh, such that you don't need a monitor, mouse, and keyboard to get functionality out of the Pi. What you're going to need to complete this tutorial is the Raspberry Pi itself. Here I have a Raspberry Pi Model 2B. You're going to need an SD card, a micro SD card that you can plug into the Pi. You're going to need an SD card adapter so that you can plug the micro SD card into your computer. You're going to need a power supply that can power the Pi, so a micro, um, micro USB power supply. And finally, you're going to need a RJ45 Ethernet cable. This is like your standard Ethernet cable that you can plug into your home router or computer so that you can actually talk with the thing. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up your internet browser and go to raspberrypi.org. Here, click on Downloads, and then click on Raspbian. And then you're going to want to download Raspbian Jesse with Pixel operating system. And you have two ways to do this. You can either download via torrent client, or you can download the zip file directly off of the website. This takes quite a bit of time, so uh, you can pause here and download. Um, I've already downloaded this, so I'm going to move along. What you're also going to want to download is the unarchiver here. If you're on a Mac and you just click on download and it allows you to download the file, uh, download this, extract it, and uh, wait for the rest of your downloads to happen. As well, while we're speaking about downloads, you're going to want to download a third item. If you go to ivanx.com slash raspberry pi, it takes you to this page here. You're going to want to download Pi Filler, and this will make your life significantly easier in flashing the uh, operating system to the SD card. So in this folder here on my desktop called Raspbian, I have the zip file and Pi Filler, and these are the two things I asked you to download, and I've installed uh, the unarchiver. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up the zip file with the unarchiver, and this will extract the file to this folder here. And here we see we have the image file. So the next thing you're going to want to do is open up Pi Filler. And yes, we want to open it up. And it says here, if you've already attached your SD card to your Mac, please eject it before continuing. So we haven't plugged in the SD card yet. Just hit continue. And then navigate to the folder uh, where you have your image file. And here's the image file. We want to choose that. And now it says, as a, uh, insert the SD card as a precaution. You may want to rename the SD card to Raspberry. OK, well, I haven't done that. But let's go ahead and take the SD card now and plug it into our adapter. And plug that into the back of our computer. And now we see what I have here called empty card show up. So because this is an empty card. So now we're going to hit continue and it's going to look for our SD card. And here it says it found empty card. So perfect. Um, it's going to wipe this card, format it, and install the image for us. So we hit continue. And yes, we want to erase the SD card. You're going to have to likely put in your password to be able to access the card like this. And then it should get started. So we have this pop up here and it's going to flash at us for quite some time and it will eventually give us an estimated time remaining. And as you can see, it takes about five and a half minutes on my computer. So I'm just going to skip ahead until this finishes here. All right, so we can see that our Pi Filler is done here and it says your SD card is ready. Go put it in your Pi. So you hit quit here and you'll see that it automatically ejected the um, uh, SD card for you. And so what we're going to have to do is remove the SD card from the computer and then plug it back in because we're not done just yet with the SD card. So plug it back in and we see that boot shows up here. So open that up and what we're going to want, and there's some files in here now. So what we're going to want to do is open up text edit and type whatever you want in here. And then you're going to want to save this to boot and you want to call it SSH and down here under plain text encoding it says if no extension is provided use dot text do not check that make sure it's not checked because what we're doing here is we are creating a file called SSH and this tells the Raspberry Pi that upon boot you want SSH to be enabled by default so give this a save 
this is the whole reason why I'm doing this tutorial. I've already made a tutorial like this uh, a couple years back, and you didn't have to do this step to be able to access SSH. It was accessible by default, but the Raspberry Pi Foundation thought that this was a bit of a security risk, and so you need to specify now uh, that you want SSH to be enabled. And by the way, you don't actually have to write whatever you want in here. All right, so now that that's done, let's eject the card. Take the card out of your computer. Take the SD card out and plug it into your Raspberry Pi. Then you're going to want to take your Ethernet cable and plug that into your Pi. And then finally, you're going to want to take your power cord and plug that into your Raspberry Pi as well. And you'll see that these lights come on here. And we see a red one and a green one. It doesn't show up too well in this lighting that I have here, but there's a red and a green and you want this to boot for about a minute. And it's initializing the first time it boots. It takes a little bit of time for it to get set up, but once it's set up, uh, your boot time will be significantly shorter. The next thing you're going to want to do is open up an instance of your terminal. So if you go here to your search and type in terminal, it'll open up here and the text is quite small, so I'm going to blow it up for you so it's easier to read. What you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to ping your Raspberry Pi to figure out where on the network it is. All Raspberry Pis default to being called Raspberry Pi uh, when you first uh, initialize them. So type in ping Raspberry Pi dot local. And here we see it's showing up at this address 100113. So to stop the ping, hit Command C, or rather Control C, and this will stop the ping. And now we can SSH into this address. So type in SSH Pi, and this is your username of the Raspberry Pi, at 10.0.1.13. Of course, your IP address may vary. You type this in, and you may or may not encounter this bug or this, this error here. And this can happen if you have configured a Raspberry Pi in the past and you... Um, you know, initialized a new one, and then the signatures are a little bit different, and it goes, hey, what's going on here? It could be a security issue. So what you're going to want to do here is, it, it says here that we have this uh, file here called known hosts, and we want to um, uh, correct the issue that we have in here. So we got to navigate to this folder, so type in cd.ssh slash and it takes you to this folder, and if we use the command ls to list the files in here, we see that we have this offending file, known hosts. Type in rm for remove, and then type in known underscore hosts. Now if I type ls to list again, we see there's no file in here, and now we can type in ssh pi at that IP address, in my case 10.0.1.13. And then it will ask us, are we sure we want to connect? And type in yes, and hit enter. Now it's going to prompt you for your Raspberry Pi's password. By default, this password is Raspberry. So I'm going to type it in now. And I've typed it in. We see nothing actually shows up here. And that's so that, you know, people looking over your shoulder can't see how many digits you've typed. It's just a security feature of Terminal. Hit Enter. And now it's going to log us into our Raspberry Pi. So we can see here that we are Pi at Raspberry Pi. The next thing you're going to want to do, since this is a fresh install, is type in sudo raspi-config. And this gives us a few options. The one that we're going to focus on here is expand file system. So uh, you might have like an 8 gig or 16 gig SD card in your Pi and you want to access that space. So of course we're going to want to expand the file system. So hit enter. And it's going to do some stuff and then it will say it will be enlarged upon next reboot. Now while we're here, let's just take a look around at what some other options we have. So we have like boot options where we could say like whether we want to boot to our console or a desktop or whatever. So, you know, it's convenient if you were to plug in a monitor to go straight to the desktop GUI. So let's say desktop auto login, let's choose that. And then we have some advanced options here where if you wanted to access some of the more uh, advanced features of the Pi, you can. I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial, so let's just go back. And then let's go to finish, hit enter. Would you like to reboot now? Yes, we would. So what this will do is it will close the connection to your Raspberry Pi because the Raspberry Pi is going through its reboot sequence. And we're going to wait, 
you know, 30 seconds or whatever. It depends on the speed of your Pi, what generation you have. But after a moment has passed, type in SSH Pi at, or actually I should say that the IP address could change every time you try to um, uh, reboot your Pi and reconnect it to your router. It really depends on your router. So we could type in ping raspberry pi dot local again. Uh, sorry, not raspberry. We want to ping raspberry pi dot local. And we see that, okay, in this instance, yes, I'm still at 10.0.1.13, but that could change, as I said. So uh, shorthand to skip that step and make it a little bit more convenient for you is we could type in SSH pi at raspberry pi dot local. So there you go. Do we want to connect? Yes, we want to connect. Type in your password. Again, it's Raspberry, it doesn't show up here. And there you have it. We have logged back into our Raspberry Pi. So now we have access to our Raspberry Pi. You might think, okay, well, maybe you want the desktop of the Raspberry Pi, not just this terminal prompt here because you're unfamiliar with the terminal prompt, whatever. Um, if you're interested in learning how to remote desktop into your Raspberry Pi, check out my next video. See you there. For more tutorials like this, visit thezanshow.com.